Hello, Abby. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine your hands? No. See that the patient is comfortable and in a good position for examining the hands. There are many signs to look for. Erythema in acute inflammation. Synovitis can produce swelling of the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints. Look for deformities such as arachnodactyly in Marfan syndrome or a rotational deformity after phalangeal fracture. Are there mallet, boutonnier or swan neck deformities? Dupatron's contracture can cause fixed flexion of the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the ring and little fingers. Look for subluxation and deviation of the wrist and metacarpophalangeal joints seen in rheumatoid arthritis. Also check for extra-articular signs of disease, such as small muscle wasting, vasculitis, Examine the proximal extensor surface of the forearms for rheumatoid nodules. It's going to feel along your fingers. Let me know if it's sore. Palpate along each finger for swelling or tenderness. Hard swellings are normally bony outgrowths called osteophytes, characteristic of osteoarthritis. They're called Heberden's or Bouchard's nodes when they occur at the distal interphalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints, respectively. Hard swellings may also be due to mucous cysts or rarely tumours. Soft swellings suggest synovitis. Detect synovitis in interphalangeal joints by gently pressing with your thumb and index finger above and below the joint to detect sponginess. Palpate around the wrists for swelling or tenderness. Osteophytes at the thumb carpometacarpal joint can cause squaring of the wrist. Just going to gently squeeze your hand again. Let me know if it's sore. Gently squeeze across the metacarpal heads to test for sponginess or tenderness. Palpate the flexor tendon sheaths in the hands and fingers to detect local swellings or tenderness. Also feel for thickening in the palmar fascia. If you detect any swelling, look for triggering or locking during extension of a flexed finger. Next, we examine movement in the wrist and hands. You just make a fist for me and straighten your fingers out. To detect crepitus, place your index finger across the dorsum of the patient's fingers while they flex and extend them. And now I'd like you to bring your hand up like that and then down and from side to side. And the same on this wrist. These are active movements of the wrist, but be aware that gravity Down. contributes to the flexion. And from side to side. And make a fist for me, please. With the fingers flexed, look in the valleys in between the knuckles. They can be lost in the swelling of synovitis. And now can you stretch your fingers out? Lack of full extension may indicate tendon rupture. And I'd like you to squeeze my fingers. Test grip strength with two fingers inserted into their palm. And now touch each finger with your thumb like so. Thumb opposition for pincer grips to demonstrate fine motor function in the hand. And just let me move your fingers. Investigate flexor tendon sheath abnormalities by passive movements of the fingers to see if you can elicit triggering or crepitus. 
triggering is caused by nodular tendon thickening or fibrous thickening of the tendon sheath. And the same on this hand. The finger tends to jam in a flexed position and requires an external or passive extending force in order to straighten. And now can I ask you to press your hands together like that and make a prayer sign? This tests the range of passive wrist extension. And now flex them the other way. And extension. Look for symmetry of the elbow and shoulder positions. The normal range is 90 degrees in each direction. Thank you very much.